Yeah. Um, here. Uh, can you see my screen, right? Yes, we can see your screen and it looks great. All right, All right. awesome. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm gonna present on uh, how protocol design uh, affects searcher strategies. Um, and this year, the Avalanche Network um, had a few changes to the core protocol. I'm gonna discuss how, yeah, uh, what happened and how that affected uh, MEB searchers and vice versa. Um, firstly, just for a little bit of history, um, I'm sure a lot of the audience is aware, um, before the MEB GET was big and um, network latency optimization was quite important. Um, and it isn't as much now on Ethereum, but it still is on other networks. Um, I'm going to be focusing on this on Avalanche because it is still quite important. And um, uh, it, it, we'll, we'll, I'll discuss it in the presentation. Um, um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about um, how the changes in the protocol design of Avalanche um, drove searchers to change their methods to minimize network latency, um, primarily for um, both receiving what, what, I, what I refer to as target transactions. These are usually, or messages, um, isn't because um, depending on the messaging protocol um, or, or the arbitrage that can be created, like if the arbitrage is at the top of the block or the background, um, uh, I'm generalizing the same message there. Um, yeah. Um, so search, sorry. Um, yeah, th this is what we're going to be doing. Uh, this is obviously like a very informal talk. Um, what I'm trying to loosely do is um, lay out, this is, this is hand wavy, but so, sort of this framework for um, how messages are gossiped on these peer-to-peer -peer networks or like message propagation. Um, and um, this is actually pretty interesting. It's, it's sort of similar. When I, when I was researching this, it's um, sort of similar to how, you, it's sort of intuitive to how um, an infectious disease, disease spreads because uh, if, you, if you view like um, a penny transaction as a, um, I guess the disease that, that's spread by these, the, the nodes on the peer-to-peer -peer network. Um, and yeah, so in this discussion, um, these are some assumptions I'm going to make. Um, the first one's a really big one um, because like geo distribution and uh, network latency and like, um, Etc. cetera, are, are a very big part of um, searchers' operations. Um, but that's not, that, that doesn't really change um, based on the protocol or like with my simplifying assumptions, that doesn't change um, or in this model. Um, and then, for certain like liveness and ordering guarantees, um, I'm going to assume the, that two thirds or two thirds plus one of validators are honest. Um, and that's safe to say because everything falls apart on a lot of these networks, so that's not true. Um, and then this last one is sort of just like so something relatively minor is that um, we're going to assume that um, nodes or, or, or like uh, 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 validators on the network aren't, um, say, like Ethermine, like um, running their own searchers and, and not, like they're not running the default client. Um, here, yeah, so in this next paragraph, um, this is obviously very informal and very rough. Um, just as 
sort of a, a sketch of a model of message propagation or uh, uh, SA infect because I think the uh, comparison sort of makes sense um, that we're going to be using. Um, so at first here, this is this this initial state, and this initial state obviously like. In practice, it's usually like in Pure or an RPC provider or some trader's local node that originates the transaction. Um, and then the messaging protocol propagates that message to um, other nodes on the network. Um, and so I'm going to discuss, I'm going to focus specifically on how different messaging protocols affect the strategies of MEV surfers. Um, not in isolation, but that's sort of the core focus of like what, what has changed over Avalanche uh, over the past year. Um, so this is, first I'll, I'll give you this overview of, um, But before I go into how the protocol changed, um, uh, I'm going to separate the state of the protocol into three distinct phases um, where the dominant strategy for optimizing um, network latency was each of these here, um, which is actually quite interesting because, say, as compared to like um, Ethereum, um, Miners, in theory, don't have any um, advantage for hearing or for um, optimized network latency, but the Avalanche protocol implementation made such an advantage quite explicit in various ways over the past year. Um, and so it led to this novel these novel strategies for MAV extraction or this novel layer that wasn't present on Ethereum. Um, and so I'll briefly go through like the, this first one is just maximize your stake to avalanche. That's was how, how it was um, initially when the network launched in early 2021. I think that's about when they launched their smart contract platform. Um, and that's very similar, right, to other proof of stake networks and even Ethereum where your, the share of any of these you should extract is approximate or your advantage is approximately equal to um, your hash rate or your stake. Um, and then next, um, for the, the next phase, was they implemented a change called they called snowman plus pup snowman plus plus or um, apricot phase four and this was due to the result or this was fixed some of the contention issues um, that the network previously had um, and the dominant strategy here was to, to hear about sorry to minimize the um, to minimize your network latency to hear about arbitrage creating transactions, um, the optimal strategy was to maximize the percentage of nodes you control on the network. Um, and I believe this is very similar to how it works on Ethereum um, because the default number of peers is, I think, something like 50. And I believe you go gossip to square root of the number of peers you have. Um, and to hear about a transaction as early as possible it makes sense to, yeah, uh, to max to be peered with everyone that's propagating these transactions. Um, and then this third one was quite interesting. It was uh, due to some consequences of number two. Um, they only gossip these pending transactions to um, validating nodes. Um, and this was quite interesting because it introduced the concept of what a lot of people refer to as a private mempool, um, which to my knowledge is not seen on other blockchain protocols. 
Um, and so now I'll go through and discuss the setting for each of these strategies and work towards why they became or why they make sense. Um, so the first phase, as I discussed, where the strategy is to maximize your state to AVEX. Um, the probability distribution, which I talked about two slides ago here. Um, th th this is one of the key differences between each phase is when you decide who to send or who to propagate a value of a valuable target message to, um, it's, it's decided by this probability distribution um, in the client implementation. Um, and initially, one of the key features of Avalanche was that there were no transactions that were propagated across the network, just um, unconfirmed and confirmed blocks. Um, so the strategy was to maximize the amount of stake you have, um, or one, one component of the optimal strategy is to maximize the stake you have. Um, and then as soon as you hear about an unconfirmed, unconfirmed block in the sense is similar possibly to, in some ways to an unconfirmed transaction on Ethereum where um, you could try to back run it, um, which is sort of, sort of what this the dominant strategy became. Um, one thing that was quite interesting was um, anyone could propose a block in this network, not just validators, which was pretty unique. I don't know. Uh, I'm not aware of other networks where that happens. Um, and another unique feature was that there was a um, hard-coded gas price in the network. So the only thing that mattered really was network latency. Um, so to achieve that network latency, you just uh, dominate charge you just to maximize your state. Then in late September, um, th there, there's a funny, uh, um, in late September, uh, the protocol changed to Snowman++. Plus Plus. Um, and one thing that remained unchanged here was um, this probability distribution for who you set, uh, propagate blocks to. But um, one key, there, there was two key changes here. Uh, one to fix the prior contention issues was that there was now a designated block producer for each block height. And um, you, and to enable this, there was now a global mempool and pending transactions were gossiped across the network. So back running in the same block was now possible which became the dominant strategy. Um, and then another really important thing was that um, while before it was, um, you sort of for this latency advantage, you needed a, a large amount of stake. That was no longer the case because um, the probability distribution for sampling, um, <coughs> sorry for sampling the recipients of pending transactions. Um, it, was, it was uniform uh, sampling, um, but across all, all peers, not just validating peers. Um, and the, the dominant strategy now was to launch many, many nodes as to, uh, yeah, to, to um, minimize the expected duration until you'd hear about the target transaction. And then um, now also a key change was that rather than creating a block um, with your background transaction and propagating it to the network, which you had done in the prior version, you, you actually couldn't do that anymore because um, of the designated block producers. 
So um, propagation to the block producer became <clears throat> quite important. And then, um, oh, here's this picture. Um, there's a lot of discussion about this, I think, in the uh, Avalanche Discord. And this is just um, one picture that uh, someone, uh, th thank you to the person who gave this to me, um, had from around that time. Um, and what we're visualizing is th this last bullet point, um, which was, I think, Snowman++ plus plus released on September 22nd. Um, and right here, you can see people very clearly playing around with um, launching large quantities of nodes, like all, all at the same time, um, which, is, which I, I thought was quite interesting. And then I don't have a later graph, but I believe that once this no longer became viable, you can see a drop off in this chart of several hundred nodes, or like a thousand. So about half of the nodes on the network or at least a third from what I was told um, were um, used to extract MEP. Um, and what we're gonna, what the, the next phase is was um, for certain reasons, um, this wasn't, um, People, I think, thought this, uh, or they, they were saying in the Discord, they thought that it could have been an attack. But um, what, for, for whatever reason, the, the protocol then changed. Um, it was actually quite interesting that uh, over a third were, um, a, third, a, third, a third of the nodes were running to attract any of the, And then in this most recent version, um, after which the protocol hasn't changed, um, this is what was causing a, a lot of interest in the community with the private mempool um, was that the protocol changed such that for access to this valuable data, um, you, you know, need to run um, validating nodes. Um, also, interestingly, uh, sampling is uniform not weighted by stake, as one might expect. Um, the dominant strategy is now after this to launch many nodes instead of launching, um, instead of accumulating massive amounts of stake as it was in this first phase, um, stake now matters less than the quantity of nodes, which is sort of, um, Interesting. Um, and other than that, it's largely unchanged from the original form of Snowman++. Plus Plus. Um, that's the whole presentation. Thank you.